the 7th of March. And today I'm going to be doing a bit of sowing, planting some potatoes and some pricking out. So there's be quite a bit in this video. Um, so I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but I'll try and cover as much as I can in this video. Because it's that time of year now where you can, most people can get started on things. Um, so if you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you like the channel, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel, all the details, and you can do that will be in the description below. Along with any other sort of information from the video, in case I don't mention it, like the varieties of things that I'm growing, I'll probably add them in the description as well. So uh, we shall start, I think, with um, just having a look at what I'm going to be pricking out. Because in one of my previous videos, I sold some brassicas. Uh, if you miss that, I will be sowing some more today. Because I, I do all the brassicas exactly the same, which is all the cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, and obviously Brussels sprouts. Um, so I've got here, I've got uh, cauliflower, some cabbage, some broccoli or calabrese and some other cabbage, like a savoy cabbage and, and one that I grow for like a spring green or just, I grow it just for greens. Um, lettuce was quite poor germination, so I had to re sow some. Um, so I thought, oh, did I sow them a little bit deep? I re, re sow them and you can, you can tell off these that obviously it, it, was, it was bad seed. So um, it does happen. You know, so uh, don't don't worry if you if you get a fail of germination, it's not necessarily your fault. Planting depth and uh, soil moisture is a is a role to play in it, but um, if you sow it more in the same sort of way, it kind of proves. So uh, we shall crack on. We'll do some spuds first. I'm just going to plant one tub up. I'm using thirty liter pots, but you can put um, a potato in a bucket or a, a bag. Just get a compost bag and turn it inside out, and just stab it with a garden fork or poke a few holes in the bottom so water can drain out. And just roll it down a bit you know and do it that way um i roughly work on the first earlies um one potato would need probably somewhere within the region of sort of um probably seven to ten liters of compost that's how i kind of work it but i'm going to be putting four in a 30 liter pot it'll be double layered so uh we shall start with that now right first of all I'll just mention um the compost i'm using is a bit of a mix of of what i've made up basically i've got some um green waste and topsoil and um, I've used some spent compost as well, so it's kind of in equal thirds, um, just to try and fluff it up a little bit. Um, obviously, it's, it's going to be quite heavy because it has some topsoil in it. And I just thought, well, use some of my old compost up because I'm adding some feed to it. So if you've got any old compost, just put a little bit of fertiliser in it, blood fish and bone meal or or bone meal, anything. Potatoes do like a bit of nitrogen to start. Sometimes chicken manure pellets or a few grass clippings in there can help. So I'm just going to basically put... A layer in the bottom, you know, you can use sort of a little bit of really well-aged manure if you want. But as I say there's bits of perlite in here and that's from the uh, spent compost, I think it's what I grew my peppers in last year. A bit of compost in the bottom. Some, I'm using a fertiliser called Spuds Galore, so I thought I'll give it a go. I have used it a few years ago, but it looked a little bit different when I used it there. Probably going to put about, I don't know, probably about 40 grams in there. Mix that into the bottom. There's probably about three inches in the bottom there at the moment. That'll mix about. With any, you know, lumps, um, just break them up. Couldn't be easier really this. You need to obviously um, chip your potatoes. We don't have to, but um, you don't want the big leggy ones. Get them in some daylight to get these nice green sort of sprouts. Um, you can pick some off if you want less, you just knock some off, but I'm not going to for these. Because I just want little salad potatoes. Uh, these will be going under cover because it's still a little bit early because of the frost. So you just have to be uh, careful. I'm using these handles as a guide, so I'm going to plant the first two that way and the second two across that way and then just sort of carefully cover them that just saves you uh dropping any hard lumps straight on them and snapping them off they will re-sprout again um i probably won't water this because it, it's quite damp anyway um because obviously i've got to move it in and out of the polytunnel but they having soil on it it'd be quite heavy you know, and eventually I will mulch it with some, uh, you know, hay or some grass clippings. Just when you're using grass clippings, just don't put them on there uh, too thickly. You're better off adding them over a, a series of a, a week or so. Just if it's sunny outside, lay them out on a, 
on a tray so it doesn't let them dry out a little bit. So it's probably two thirds of the way up now. So I'm going to add a little bit more fertiliser. So it's just first early, this variety is swift and uh, probably looking at about 10 weeks time. If they get a bit too wet and cold, they can obviously rot off. So, uh, putting these other ones, see so the sprout on the bottom there, I don't want that, so I'll just knock it off. But there, with a little bit of scab on there, it's not really an issue. These are some potatoes that I've saved from my own from last year. You just keep them cool, and then once it comes sort of January, February, Bring them onto a, you know, a light, um, not too warm, but warmish sort of windowsill, and that'll fire them off. Then. You know, and when you're doing it later in the year, you can sort of, if you're just doing a couple of potatoes at the bottom, just cover them a bit, and then you can add the compost as the tops grow. But uh, this time of year now, I'm just going to fill them right up. Because obviously the, this pot will warm up in the day. So if you get a cold night, it'll take a little while for it to uh, cool down. Now it will sink a bit this anyway, so I don't mind filling it right up. And that'll sink down and then I'll mulch it in a couple of weeks. It's just I haven't got any straw at the moment. And that's it, couldn't be easier. Just put a label in, give it like 10, 12 weeks. And you're supposed to be good to go. Usually when the tops have died back, that's when they're ready. Before we prick out the brassicas and that, I'll show you um, different ways of filling your trays in. And then I'll sort of, you know, I'll sow the Brussels sprouts so you can actually see how I sow the brassicas because it's the same for, for all of them. Uh, it doesn't change throughout the year, so they're exactly the same way. There's options, you use trays like this or whatever you've got, you know, um, margarine tubs, anything like that. It doesn't really matter, the plants don't mind. As long as it can drain, you know, it's fine. Um, People have been asking where I get these from. You just find them online. They're made by a company called uh, Stewart. That's S-T-E-W-A-R-T. -E um, the size of them are, I think they're 40 or 45 mil depth by uh, 200 mil or 20 centimetres. So it's like 20 centimetres by four and a half centimetres. Drainage holes, you could pick the labels off if you want. Um, I do sometimes, but usually first year they wear off. Um, green or black, um, no real difference, you know, sometimes black when, it, when it's hot they can warm up, obviously dry out a bit quick, but I've never really had any issues. These are 40 cell um, module trays, well they're inserts, uh, drain jaws in the bottom, they're quite deep, they're probably 50 mil deep then. Um, you can also get uh, other ones which are 24 and 15, which I also use. So regarding filling them, um, we'll fill one of these first. So all I tend to do is, I mean, this is just a um, mix of my own and some spent. Just, you know, I do like using old compost sometimes. You know, it's, it's kind of dried right out and then I've just re-soaked it all up. So I'm just filling it, I'm not pressing it down. Making sure it's all plenty in there. And I'll get another one. I simply just get it and I just press it down, not too hard. Just pressing it down. So it only sinks about, you know, five, five mil with that. You know, you can go a little bit more if you want, but it depends on the seed. Brassicas, yeah, they, they don't mind being a little bit deeper, but things like lettuce and tomatoes, which I'm sowing today, um, they don't like being too deep. Usually it's twice the thickness of the seed is, is enough depth. So I'll simply do that and you can pre-water it. If you're going to water it from the top, I'll probably do a few of them and leave them for a few hours or till the next day to fully drain out so they're not swamped. The other way I have a little tray of water at the side here, there's probably a centimetre of water in it. And if I sit that in it like that, it'll take about a minute and you'll just start seeing it to start glisten on the top or darken and lift it off then and put it somewhere to drain because the rest of it will wick through it. And that's the thing, if you've not pressed your compost down quite enough, it'll struggle to wick it and if your compost is too dry, 
I mean, uh, you know, this I have dampened it up a little bit to get it going. Um, it can take a little while. Like I say, because it's drained, it's, it's watered from the bottom, you're not going to worry about putting any seeds in, sort of any sloppy top stuff. But, you know, that won't take long at all. So I'll fill up one of the uh, module trays now. So uh, I'll grab it there, a little board on. You know, because I do, I like to bounce my trays, you know, to sort of mimic natural settling. Similar mix, the only thing that's different about this is it's got a little bit of that uh, cocoa peat in. Um, because I like sieve compost, but for when you're pulling plants out, I like to have some sort of fibre in there. And because my own compost lacks the, the woody content, you know, I, I prefer to have a few strands. It just all helps it come together. You simply just top it up, like so. You can sort of press it down if you want, you know, which I will do, but I'm not going to press it down too much. Just going to lift that up and sit it back in again. Sometimes it gets a bit of air trapped in it. What I'm going to do with that then, simply lift it and drop it like that. And that just settles it down a bit more. And then you can just top it up a little bit more if you want. Don't need much. You know, because it will sink as you water it. But you could do the same again if you're going to prick things out. That's starting to go dark on top now, so I'll lift that out. That's had long enough. And that'll just carry on sort of um, through like capillary action. It'll wick through and moisten it all up. And then obviously when you put a lid on it on the propagator, the humidity. You know, I tend to sometimes not use a lid for the first day or so, just to make sure anything excess-wise is evaporated off. You know, that's it, if it's bottom water, it can only take up as much as the compost will let it. And they can go along just, I'm not pressing them down, it's just, uh, just tamping them down just to make sure it's all fully in. Because obviously when the compost dries out, it shrinks. You know, some people like to leave a little gap, like a little well for when they're watering, but um, I just find it, it sinks a little bit anyway with its own natural uh, settling time. Depending on what you put in there, uh, I mean, these will probably house lettuce, these. I'll put lettuce in these because they're not going to be in there that long, probably about three or four weeks. So I'll, I'll soak that probably. Once I've pricked them out into it, I'll sit the tray um, into some water, give it a few minutes. You know, but you can water them from the top, so you don't go too, too mad. Well, I've got some trays draining off, so I'll uh, I'll just show you quickly on there uh, how I'm going to uh, how I how I saw my brassicas. Uh, so this, I'm doing Brussels sprouts. Uh, it's a little bit earlier than I'd usually do them, but. Um, because I've got quite a bit of growing space, so I can always pop a few in my fruit cage. You know, this variety is called Maximus. I've grown it before. I grew one called Brendan last year and wasn't a fan of it, to be honest. Now, these will end up getting pricked out from these into these smaller pots. And if I need to uh, give them a little bit more time, they'll tend to go up into uh, something a bit more like a, an eight centimetre pot. You know, and they'll probably sit in this. They could, you know, they'll probably last until end of April in a pot that size. So I'm going to get root bound. So I'm not going to sow loads of them. I could split this tray in half if I wanted to, but I'm just going to uh, just scatter them. You know, because there's a few people that come down the allotment, uh, newcomers and that, I always like to give them a few plants just in case they've had a few problems. Or if they're starting late, the garden centres have run out. I've got excess plants when I go down, I always give them away. Well, sometimes it can be a bit tricky for those who are starting out, they're a bit unsure of a few things. And a lot of it is trial and error. So all I'm going to do now is simply get some compost. Yeah, I mean, this is already kind of fine enough for brassicas anyway. And just sieve it until I 
I can't see the seeds, but because of these, you know, that's pretty much kind of filling to the top. And this will, uh, once it touches the compost underneath, it'll pull the moisture through. You just need to make sure it's spread out like that and just tap it down to make sure it's not, not really pressing it hard. Just take off any excess like that. That's all you do with all your brassicas. And then obviously we'll look at pricking them out in a minute. I'm going to prick out these cauliflower now. The variety is Clapton, um, but do them all the same. So I'll say I'll just show you a couple of these because all the pricking out is exactly the same. I did a thing with drinking straws later on down the line, which I'll explain. Um, I have done it in previous years. If you want to look back and check why I do it, it's just I have problems with uh, an insect called a leather jacket, which um, is a a grub of the crane fly or the daddy long legs, and it has a habit of nipping stuff off at the stem. So uh, I'll be doing that in due course, before they get planted up at the allotment anyway. So these are just filled with multi-purpose compost, um, the, the mix of my own. Just, you know, a bit of this and that really. So it's just got a little dibby, you can use like a little twig or a pencil. And just grab it by the seed, these are seed leaves, eventually these will be yellow and fall off, they're not required after a while. You know, just try and tease them apart, there's a little root system on it there. You know, when you do plant these actually out into the ground, um, the next set of leaves that will come will be the first true leaves. So these first two leaves here are the seed leaves. The next ones will be the true leaves. I'm just going to make a hole. Drop it, you know, pretty much down to where the leaves start, more or less. Make sure that's all. These I will water just to settle everything around the roots, you know, but once you uh, get the hang of it, it does not take long. You can get sometimes, if, I mean these won't be going under a, a lid or anything, these will be just sort of partially getting hardened off now. They have been outside for, for about a week now these. I just take them indoors, put them on the windowsill to get them to germinate and as soon as they just start coming through I bring them out in the daytime and then back in at night for a few days and provided there's no frost um, I'll leave them out then. So it's just a case to get the world's slowest watering can. They are good though because they don't wash the seeds out. And they're made by a company called um, it's Hawes, H-A-W-S. You know but you can, you can soak these from the bottom as well. Just doing this for initial sort of just wash anything down. The compost is damp inside anyway because I did water them um, last night. Got a bit of a watering. You know they might uh, wilt a little bit. But just it's okay to sort of just pop them in the uh, in the shade for a few hours till they get a good drink up and then they'll. Uh, You'll, you'll know the day after you know you can always add a little bit of water but it's hard to take it away so because these pots will drain freely as well like I say you've just got to make sure that any hard frosts that group all your pots together or something like that, anything just to gather a bit of heat in one area and it's as simple as that I mean I can roughly tell when I pick a pot up if it feels like it's got a good weight of water in there. Don't worry about it if they lean over because they'll all stand up and they all want to grow towards the sun. So uh, sometimes like on a windowsill they will start leaning so you have to keep turning them and things like that but uh, they'll, they'll be fine. I have every confidence and they'll be fine. So I'll get on with the rest of them and uh, we'll do some seed sowing. Right, I'm going to sow some tomatoes now. I've sown some already so I've got a couple of varieties left. So I thought I'd just put the camera on for them. Done them all the same way. And these are the ones that you saw me fill up before. They're a little bit on the wet side, but uh, we'll see how we get on. So I'm just basically going to sort of divide the tray into two. This variety is uh, Sun Gold. There's not so many uh, seeds in there. Let's get right down to the corner. Last thing with uh, F1 seeds. It tends to be a little bit more expensive. 
uh, Sun Gold is one of the earliest to come, really. Be quite a bendy plant, I've found. Making sure they're all got a bit of space. As long as there's a good inch between it, between them should be fine. I mean, I'll probably end up needing three. But I always like to do a bit of a backup. And the other one is the uh, good old gardener's delight. Well, some of these seeds are getting near uh, past the date. I have got some of my own save seed, but I thought I'll use this up and. I've got a few varieties that I've saved my own seed. I found some years Gardener's Delight can uh, get absolute abundance of tomatoes and other years it can be a little bit sparse. Just make sure there's a definite good gap between them so I don't mix them up. There's a good like inch gap in the middle. Put them there. A little uh, little sieve. And just so I can't cover it so I can't see the seed anymore. See for that, you know, three or four mil of that going on top of there. Give her a smooth off. Gent very gently pat it down because it'll uh, get quite wet quite quick that because it'll just wick straight through from the uh, moist compost from underneath. A couple of labels. Sun gold. GD, Gardener's Delight. So there's a few varieties as I've doing the Roma again, um, Tigerella, Moneymaker, Alicante. Um, what else is there? Um, these two. There's another one, can't see, Cure, Cure de Boo. It's like a, I've never grown that one before. It's like a big plum tomato, I think. I've done uh, San Marzano usually. I've not. I've, I've got some seed, but I've not sown any. Because it does have a bit of a problem with blossom and rot a bit more than others, which is kind of to do a bit of bit of watering issue and obviously magnesium calcium deficiencies can cause it. I need to do some uh, preparation on the beds in here. We're actually going to add a little bit of soil into it so it doesn't dry out so much. Other thing I'm going to sow is um, celery. So. Uh, don't know how many seed I've got left. I thought I didn't have any, but I've got some seed. I only use the celery mainly for putting in sauces. But it's a nice little thing to have. It does need a bit of water in though. Seeds are tiny, so germination can be a bit in this sometimes. Just going to scatter about all of this. If I think on, I might actually remember to sow some herbs this year. Even less compost on this, I think, because the seeds are tiny. That'll do for that. That variety is called Blush. So it's self blanching so you can just plant it in a block. About, you know, I tend to do about eight inches apart in rows, probably a foot apart sometimes, or sometimes just a foot each way. Depends how big I want them. Blush. So none of these are going to get watered. They'll probably not get even, they'll, they'll not get watered um, again. Unless it'll be dry right out, but um, usually. That's it, they've had the bottom watering, and that's the, that's all they get. So I just need to find a bit of an old tray, and I'll do some beetroot. Right, I've got myself a bit of an old damaged tray, a few splits in it, but it'll, uh, it'll do. I've trimmed the worst of it off. Let it all bounce. Need 
probably could do with pressing this in not too much but uh, making sure there's plenty of compost in here if you want like really nice round beetroot and everything perfect so I'm direct because sometimes because obviously because they've got a tap root on them they hit the bottoms of these and they can go a bit uh, a bit funky but um won't worry about that and I think for me dibber for this sharp is a good thing just simply the balls half inch down well 10 to 15 millimeters deep because uh, beetroot seeds are not like a single seed some varieties are they're a cluster of seeds so just because you put like uh, one in doesn't mean you're going to get one beetroot You know, you could probably wait a couple of weeks and sow these directs into the ground. Um, just try and find my packet now. There it is, good old bolt hardy. It's pretty reliable. There's only me who eats it in the house. I could probably go with maybe three and four maybe I've got some other beetroot sown I think like a cylindrical type I'll try a few of them this year I've still got some uh, beyond beetroot pickled still from last year. Two jars left, so uh, as a general rule of thumb, you know, these will be ready. As I tend to find most things is around the 100 day mark, 80 to 100 days. A little bit shallow there. That'll do for them. Don't need to do anything fancy finely sift for beetroot because it's quite a big seed. It's all packed now. And then I'll uh, I'll give that a bit of a water. Probably pop it inside until it starts or if some of them start. Unless it's nice and sunny. That's it for this video. So it's pretty much everything I wanted to get done has been done. Uh, I did a bricking out, some more sowings, the tomatoes, the celery, a little bit more lettuce, um, which I kind of sowed exactly the same way I did the brassicas, to be honest, just a little less compost on the top of them. Um, obviously the beetroot. So yeah, everything's doing okay. You know, I've got the uh, spring onions. Um, you know, they're, they're coming through and I don't know how you can see because uh, coming through there's a few like blanks probably down to either depth or um probably more so depth they'll probably come up at some point um but there's the uh, sweet peas you know there's a couple of empty cells i've just dropped another seed in so they're all starting to come up now so they just stay out here all the time now um onions onions are doing all right um, I'd say it's just uh, trying to go steady on the water inside of things, but you know, there's plenty of onions there doing all right. A bit of Santero and the Red Spark, so I've over 100 onions in here, probably way more than that, probably nearly 200 onions in here altogether. Um, garlic, most of it's pretty much coming up now, like so. You know, plenty of you know, roots at the bottom, some obviously poking out more than others. Um, also, uh, I don't think you've seen these yet. These are my uh, Kelsey onions. I think I sold these around Boxing Day or something like that. They've been under the lights and been out here now for a couple of weeks. Um, so those are the Kelsey onions. I've got 30. There's no way I'm going to be growing them all. So um, I think my brother-in-law can have some of them. Obviously, some people at the uh, allotment as well, because, you know, on average, you can get sort of like three, four, five pounds. I mean, the biggest is about eight. 
um, which is quite a lump of an onion. And uh, it doesn't store very well, but it's just a bit of fun. You know, if you've got a bit of space, you know, you can get a good size onion from like a square foot, you can get a right lump. So it's just a bit of fun. So yeah, I've, I've sown a little bit more rocket. So that's, that's pretty much the kind of frost hardy stuff um, pricked out. And then uh, obviously lettuce is semi frost hardy and then the frost tender stuff like the tomatoes, they will not stay out here. They will stay indoors. Uh, I'll take them in. I've just got them out here in the sun just to you know, dry them off. I'll sort some lids out and clean them and they'll go in, in, inside and they won't come out here until I feel it's safe enough because um, they only need a little bit of cool breeze to hit them and they can just, they just drop. Um, I mean, I had some old uh, uh, pepper plants in here, um, just tiny seedlings. We had a, it went down to minus one last night. And um, I mean, I've, I've, I've already got some that I've, I needed out of it, but they were just leftovers, which kind of like just annihilated them. So it just takes that one night where you just forget, you know, you nod off a little bit and don't keep an eye on the temperature. Because I have like a little, uh, I got it from the supermarket, it's like a little, um, it's got the temperature on it. But also I have a receiver in the house, so I can just keep a check it when I'm making a brew. It's just by a kitchen window, so I can have a look at it. And it tells me what temperature it is here on the shelves. Because obviously, um, underneath shelves, I try and load up with as much compost and stuff as possible because it all absorbs the heat. So I'll be um, sorting these out in a minute, taking some stuff indoors and then shutting the door to let the last bit, last bit of sunlight warm everything up in here. And then I'll probably come in later on and just lay a fleece over the stuff, just in case. It just traps that heat in and any heat that's coming from underneath traps in there as well. The onions are, aren't too bad. Um, as long as it doesn't get a real hard frost, I'll be fine. So uh, thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. See you now. Bye-bye.